Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back. So, uh, in our previous lecture, we were discussing uh, how government or authority in any society, any country, how they can intervene into the free market operation, right? Through some policies, we have exclusively discussed if government impose some legal lower limit or legal upper limit of the price in the market, how it will have implication over the market equilibrium uh, price and quantities. Okay. Then we just started if instead of that government impose some, some sort of tax on some commodity or on the commodity what is going to be uh, or the market of which commodity we are talking about here. Right? So, suppose government is going to impose a tax on that particular commodity, how the implication of that tax, tax will be there on the equilibrium of that market equilibrium it as usual we know that it has two dimensions at least two dimensions equilibrium price at which that commodity per unit of the commodity will be transacted in the market after this Im, uh, imposition of the tax by the government and of course the what will be the equilibrium quantity or amount of the quantity of that good or that service will be transacted in the market after this tax uh, imposition of this tax right so, we have discussed and we, we, we just started in our last uh, lecture that if government impose that tax, how it will, uh, it will move either demand curve or supply curve depends on tax is imposed on whom. If you can remember, we have started with, with a question, government is going to, so we have clarified that we will discuss in this course only the unit tax means certain amount of money per unit of transaction of that commodity or of that service whatever it is. Okay. So, in that way so unit tax or that is sometimes called quantity tax also per unit quantity of the good transaction that much amount of money is tax. Okay. So, quantity tax. Uh, we are going to discuss in this course. So, that quantity tax, first question is tax is imposed on whom? Okay. If tax is imposed on the sellers, uh, supply curve because sellers are the all the uh, potential suppliers, all the sellers who are bringing their product, this product, what we are talking about, they are the producer, they are bringing this product in the market with the hope that they will be able to sell their product to some customer in that market, right. So, whatever the market supply car, it is some sort of reflection or some sort of representation of the supply side behavior of the sellers, right. Now, the question is say, suppose, suppose we are, we are say considering say this is the uh, market and as usual we are measuring quantity demanded and quantity supplied all are in the horizontal axis price in the vertical axis and suppose this is the market demand curve, this demand curve is market demand curve, it is the reflection of the demand for that commodity generated by all the potential customers of that commodity in the market, right. It is market demand curve, right. In the same way, this is suppose the market supply curve, right. And now, if government say impose say uh, rupees 3 per unit per unit of that commodity as tax and that tax is imposed on the sellers, okay, we know that supply curve will move, perhaps supply curve will move this way from S to S1. Okay. Now, the question is how we can interpret this movement? We can interpret this movement of the supply curve in two alternative ways, either this way or that way. Okay. This way means what? See the whatever, so this way when we are going, we are going horizontally leftward, right. It means that if market price is say OP1, at that level of market price, okay, earlier sellers of that market together could supply this much of commodity, okay, say OQ1, okay. Now, if the price is still that much, okay because they could be able to sell only this much or deliver only this much. Why? 
because they have to give uh, they have to pay some tax to the government per unit of the commodity what they are going to sell right so effectively their cost of production has increased whatever cost of production so here the seller will face uh, one additional cost of production initially what before the tax whatever cost of production they were facing due to hiring different factors of production that cost of production they will still face but in addition to that they have to face some cost say per unit rupees 3 per unit of that product right because if one unit i i am a seller if i want to sell one unit right i have to pay say 3 rupees to the government as tax for that one unit uh, sold by me right so effectively my cost will increase now by 3 rupees so with an increment of in the cost right if the same market price prevails in the uh, in the market same price prevails in the market right i will be able to only deliver little bit less why i am telling little bit less when we are going this way horizontally left toward right that say let me try to clari clarify that in a different kind of logic when we are going this direction it is very easy because in the last lecture we told that this vertical distance will be rupees 3 because per unit earlier i could or one farmer could sell this much of product if price is this much okay now he his, since his cost of production increases he needs that much plus rupees 3 as the price to be able to sell same amount of product or to be able to deliver same amount of product to the market why that much plus rupees 3 that much plus rupees 3 or plus the tax amount per unit if that producer wants to keep same profit margin okay we have we have discussed that in our last class suppose uh, this is suppose say this is suppose say 13 rupee okay so actually he incurs 12 rupee as tax uh, as cost of production and he was keeping rupee 1 as his profit margin so in that way 13 rupee was enough for him to be able to deliver that product now in the changing scenario when government is imposing rupees 3 per unit of transaction of the tax on that particular seller okay under this scenario if still he wants to keep that rupee 1 as as profit margin so his cost of production now is actually 12 plus 3 this 12 rupees is coming from the hiring of factors of production and this 3 rupee is coming to give the tax to the government so it essentially 16 instead of 12 rupee now it is 15 rupee is coming as the as the cost of production to him effective cost of production and if he wants to keep same 1 rupee as profit margin so it will be over that so rupees 16 so when rupees 13 was the earlier was enough for him to deliver or to be able to deliver this much of commodity to the market he needs now to de to be able to deliver same amount of commodity in the market he needs only not 13 rupee rather 13 plus 3 rupee 16 rupee right so keep under the setter is peribus condition keep all other things unchanged under this setter is peribus condition or keep all other things unchanged by this by this uh, phrase we are referring here even if he wants to keep the same profit margin 1 rupee per unit right that is also captured there so under the setter is peribus condition if government impose this kind of tax rupees 3 per unit okay now the supply curve will shift leftward and vertical distance between the earlier supply curve and new supply curve will be rupees 3 that tax amount why the vertical distance it is very easy to understand now now how you can we can understand this way why the at, at every possible price level at every possible price level some less amount of quantity will be delivered or will be supplied in the market look if i consider that person so this is the supply curve and this is the market supply curve say red color what we are writing or drawing the this is the market supply curve right that market supply is basically horizontal aggregation or summation of all the supplies all the produced commodities by all the all the sellers or all the producers who produce that commodity whatever amount of commodities they are coming with to the market 
to sell that product right. That is the sum of all those su supplies by all the potential producers. So, suppose one seller is here another seller is here. Can I tell let us say suppose this is a uh, seller A here and seller B here right. If I tell that seller A is more efficient than seller B, uh, is it understandable to you people? Efficient in which sense? Because the same commodity, if seller A wants to deliver that product, okay, this much of market price of that product is enough for him to meet up his cost of production as well as profit margin. Whereas, the seller B minimum price is this much to be able to supply that product in the market. That means what? The cost of production of the same product, right? Seller B has more than seller A. So, seller B is, is incurring more cost of production than seller B. So, same product, same commodity, one person can deliver much more cheaper price at much more cheaper price than the other person. So, definitely I can tell that who can be able to deliver at cheaper price, that person is uh, more efficient. Right. So, when due to imposition of government tax, effective price, effective cost of each of the seller will increase, right. So, as a result, within this range, right, at this price, suppose earlier if price was OP2, okay, OP2, then this much of commodity could be sold in or could be delivered in the market, right, could be supplied in the market, okay. But now, only this much would be supplied in the market and this much commodity say in green bracketed, this much amount of the commodity will not be delivered now. Why? Because who are the relatively uh, inefficient producer who needs more cost or who incur more cost to uh, produce that commodity, right? Some of them will no longer be able to tolerate this price. So, they will go out of the market, right. So, see, see look at here, this person he needs, person who is standing here he needs 10 rupee only to be able to deliver that product in the market. This person needs semi 14 rupees, this person say 16 rupees, something like that. This person suppose say 19 rupees. As we are moving this, this side, okay, the subsequent producers who are delivering that product, right, they are more and more inefficient relatively inefficient producers are there in the right side okay now if market price is this much okay this much before the tax what was the market price the people who could tolerate some people after the tax they may not be able to tolerate because before now their effective cost of production has increased by 3 rupee then the earlier cost of production the people who cannot tolerate the after the tax whatever the price, okay, they will go out of the market. So, that is why market supply will be reduced by this one, this amount. But the, that this amount what I am telling, this horizontal distance of between the two supply car, uh, there is no apparently very straight forward way uh, to capture that much quantity. Okay, but it is very easy to capture the vertical distance, vertical distance will be the tax amount as we have already clarified. So, in that way, so first what was our target here? Our target is to clarify if government imposes some tax on a commodity, what will be implication? So, to understand that implication, we are first trying to understand with a, starting with a question. What is that question? Tax is imposed on whom? If the answer is tax is on sellers, supply car will lift leftwards, shift leftward. Alternatively, if tax is imposed on the buyers, okay, customers, then demand car will shift leftward. Okay. Why that is the case? Let us clarify that. Say again, that quantity demanded, quantity supplied, we are measuring both in the horizontal axis, price in the vertical axis. Suppose this is the demand car, this is the supply car. Okay. If you can remember sometimes sometimes earlier we told that price alternative price no one price here one price here this demand curve is generated by all the potential customers in that market right. So, this price the person the customer who is standing here he can tolerate this much price. 
the person who is standing here, he can tolerate he or she of course, can tolerate this much price and so on, right. So, that way we, we, we interpret price as maximum willingness to pay for a commodity, what is maximum willingness to pay by me vis a vis by another person. Say person A, his maximum willingness to pay is little bit more than person B, than even person C and so on. Look, if this is the market demand curve and this is the this is the market supply curve and this is the market demand curve, we know that this will be the equilibrium price. At that price, every unit of that product will be transacted in the market. That does not mean that the person who is standing here, his willingness to pay only this, his willingness to pay this much, right. See, I am purchasing a pen from the market, right, and that price of that pen is 10 rupees, okay. So, my willingness to pay for that commodity, right, it is when I purchase that product from the market by paying 10 rupees to the seller, right, my willingness to pay is either 10 rupees or more than that, right. Perhaps my willingness to pay for that same pen is 20 rupees, but I am not disclosing that to the seller because being a customer, I will be always happy to pay less price, right. So, that is the thing. So, different people ha may have different valuation of the commodity. If you can remember, we gave the tennis ball example, right? Uh, tennis ball, okay. The kind of valuation of a tennis ball to a tennis player, that much valuation may not be there to a person who play cricket with tennis ball, okay. If te tennis ball price is very uh, becomes very high tomorrow, right, perhaps they will switch to uh, true cricket ball. Look, when I am telling tennis ball price increases very high tomorrow, under the settlement is previous condition only, assuming that that cricket ball price will not increase in that way, right. So, always by default settlement is previous is there when we are trying to capture some change, okay. So, that way. So, and, and the, the so suppose this, this commodity is tennis ball. So, the person A is a tennis player, person B is a cricket player, but sometimes he used to play uh, cricket also using tennis ball in the locality. Okay. And suppose person C neither play tennis nor play cricket. So, person C does, uh, does not be willing to give that many price, at least the price what is prevailing in the market. Okay. So, the same commodity has different types subjective valuation to the different people, different potential customers. Okay. As a result, this is the demand curve when it is coming, right? This kind of demand curve. So, now so, suppose earlier price was this, equilibrium price was that and person was here, right, okay. So, now that person, his willingness to pay is this much, right, and he was very happy because ultimately he was paying this much because at that price, commodity is transacted in the market, right. Now, suppose tax is imposed on the customers, that means the person, okay who are willing to pay this much for the commodity to the market, he or she will not no longer be able to willing to pay that much because he knows that if I want to purchase that commodity, for that commodity I have to pay the tax amount to the government also because tax per unit of the commodity. Suppose the same amount rupees 3 per unit that is the tax amount, right. So, suppose this amount was say 15, rupees 15 market price was rupees 10, this is 10 rupee, that is the market price initially, but his willingness to pay is 15, okay. He was happy that uh, at 10 rupee he can purchase the product. Now, he knows that after this imposition of the tax by the government, he knows that if I purchase that product, I have to pay 3 rupees to the government. So, definitely I will be willing only to spend 12 rupee to the uh, sellers of that product, right. So, as a result, my demand curve will shift leftward or downward whatever way you can tell, okay. And the same vertical distance will be rupees 3, okay. So, look at here, it does not matter tax is imposed on whom, whether seller or the buyers. If it is on buyers, demand curve will shift leftward. If it is sellers, supply curve will shift to leftward. And if you ask the question how much they will shift? vertical distance under the set is perigas condition, vertical distance between the two supply curves or two demand curves depending on what is shifting, okay, will be the tax amount.
ok. If this larger message we, we can understand then it is very easy what kind of equilibrium or what kind of implication will be there on the equilibrium right. We will discuss that now. Let us try to understand that uh, demand curve shift ok and this way we have now already understood because same person what was willingness to pay earlier now it will be reduced by the amount of tax because he has to pay the tax to the government and beside that over and above that he has to pay the some price to the seller of the product right. So, he will be willing to pay less amount exactly tax amount less uh, to the seller now for the same commodity after the imposition of the tax. How we can discuss or how we can understand this way? Just exactly the way we have discussed that some efficient custom uh, efficient seller and inefficient sellers or efficient producer and inefficient producer. So, producers who could be able to deliver a product in cheaper prices ok, those will be more and more efficient or relatively more efficient producer ok. Exactly the same way the customer who valued the product more those customers are more efficient customers ok or more valued customer I can tell we can tell more valued customer ok. One product same product right one pen uh, it is it is it is uh, valuation may be uh, 10 rupees see we usually do not make what is its valuation when I am going to purchase from 10 um, from the market by paying 10 rupees we never ask uh, to me that what is its valuation is it 11 rupees is it 12 rupees or something like that. We can tell that if we ask in that way ourselves right we will get the answer that perhaps it is more than 10 or at least 10 rupees right, but exactly what is that, but that valuation how this pain has some utility to me some uh, it, this pain will give some sort of service to me right. If we could somehow quantify that, that service in monetary terms perhaps that will be either 10 rupees or more than that in that way right. So, that valuation what we told that it is subjective valuation same commodity that one pen it may be having valuation 15 rupee to a student and it may be having valuation say 5 rupee to a farmer who do not use at all pen or some even some, some people it valuation may be 0 he or she does not want that pen at all. If you give that pen no it will be simply idle he will not be able to use that ok. So, definitely valuation of that pen uh, to that part that kind of person will be very less right. Okay, so, in that way, so the point is when demand curve is shifting leftward, it is basically the kind of price earlier was there, right. So, suppose I am standing here. So, I will I will demand for one unit of that commodity if this is the price. Now, at the same price, why the market demand will reduce this much? because the person who are standing here he no longer will be able to tolerate that price the same price what was there before tax because suppose this was the say 10 rupee and he his valuation was exactly 10 rupee ok before the tax. Now, he knows that if I purchase that product now because my valuation is 10 rupee I will not I will not be willing to give anything more than 10 rupee ok at most I will give 10 rupee right. Now, same price 10 rupees there in the market I can no longer be able to purchase that product at 10 rupees because over and above that 10 rupees if I purchase I have to pay this this much tax to the government right. So, this kind of person who is just marginally managing the price right they will no, long, no longer able to tolerate the price level ok. So, they will not be able to generate any demand in the market you can understand what we define as demand. When demand is your desire to get something, but backed by your purchasing power ok. The person who were giving 10 rupee and purchasing that pen after this tax his or her desire is still there to get that pen, but it is not now backed by the purchasing power because his purchasing power uh, will go down now uh, means whatever he will be able to pay to the seller plus the tax amount will be now 10 rupee right. So, if market price that seller is charging still 10 rupee after this tax right his purchasing power will not be able to tolerate that. That is why that kind of customer will not generate any demand for the product. So, that kind of 
customers will go out of the market. They will not generate any effective demand in the market. As a result, if you keep the same price after the tax even, right, quantity demanded at that price will be reduced to some extent, okay, may be bracketed by this much quantity will be reduced, right. So, as I told or as we clarified for the supply curve, exactly the same kind of for the demand curve, okay, it is very difficult, this is how much it will be uh, shift leftward, it is very easy how much it will shift downward, okay, because downward distance will be the tax amount. That will be easy. How much it will shift, you know, if we understand leftward horizontally, how much it will shift to understand that or to calculate that quantity, right? We have to know that how many of the people, how many of the potential buyers in that market was there who will not be able to tolerate price this plus 3 rupee tax anymore, who were earlier, who could tolerate 10 rupee. Now, who is those kind of people who cannot tolerate 10 rupee plus 3 rupee tax. So, if you know those many people, what was their demand earlier, that much demand will reduce now, right. So, that we understand, but that is very difficult apparently from this kind of diagram or whatever the knowledge we have knows, we, we have learned so far in the economics, we cannot, but it is very easy if we discuss in this way, how much it will shift downward vertically, okay. So, that is the thing. Now, it is the uh, routine exercise. Okay, what will be the implication of the equilibrium? Okay, let us discuss. Okay, so quantity demanded, quantity supplied is there, price is there. Suppose this was the equilibrium, E was the equilibrium, O our origin, O P star was the equilibrium price initially, and O Q star was the equilibrium quantity initially before the tax. Okay. Now, if tax is imposed, we have already discussed if we know that tax is imposed on sellers, supply curve will shift leftward. If it is imposed on buyers, demand curve will shift leftward. But if nothing is told to us, we it is only told that say uh, rupees say 3 per unit tax is imposed on that commodity. Whether tax is on buyers or sellers, it is not exclusively mentioned. So, what we can do? We know that equilibrium does not matter whether supply curve will shift or demand curve will shift, equilibrium will shift leftward for sure. Why? Because I do not know, although I do not know that whether demand curve will shift or whether supply curve will shift, but whatever curve it will shift, right, it will shift in the leftward, right. So, that means if supply curve shift, equilibrium will be here. Alternatively, alternatively, okay, alternatively, if demand curve shift, okay, demand curve shift, okay, it will be again, so supply curve will be, so it will be here, right. So, does not matter whether tax is imposed on seller or imposed on the buyer, okay one of the depending on on whom the tax is imposed, one of the two curves will shift. We are assuming that uh, under the Saturday's previous condition, one party is taxed either seller or the buyer, if that is the case. If both the parties are taxed uh, simultaneously, you can easily capture both the curves will shift, okay, accordingly, right. You can easily, easily do that. So, let us do not complicate that, you can do on your own that playing around, okay. So, does not matter. Our equilibrium quantity of the transaction after the imposition of the tax will fall for sure that we are getting that message. Now, the question is to what extent it will fall. So, uh, let, let, let us draw the diagram F phrase, okay. Quantity demanded, quantity supplied usual as we are measuring here, price that side, this is the demand curve, this was rather this was the supply car, okay. And these two are the, this was the equilibrium price initially, this was the equilibrium quantity initially and E was the equilibrium point where demand curve and supply curve are cutting each other or meeting each other, right. So, if I ask what is the vertical distance between demand curve and supply curve at E point, okay, answer is 0. And as we move this side, that vertical distance is continuously increasing, 
here little bit more, here 0, here little bit even more, here even more, even more as we are going, right. So, the question is to what extent equilibrium quantity will fall? That answer is that that extent equilibrium quantity will fall for that quantity at which vertical distance between the the two uh, uh, between the demand curve and supply curve, old demand curve and supply curve, what was the demand curve and supply curve before the tax, that vertical distance should be the tax amount, that is the larger message. Okay. So, suppose, suppose I am erasing all these things. So, this was the demand curve, the, uh, supply curve, this was the demand curve, okay. Okay, and this was the equilibrium, right? This was the equilibrium, right? Suppose tax is say uh, rupees say 3 per unit ok. So, suppose this distance is rupees 3 per unit ok. So, equilibrium quantity will be say q 1 star after the imposition of the tax or after the Im implementation of this tax policy by the government or by the, uh, the authority ok. Now, so equilibrium quantity will be single but there will be two equilibrium prices. One equilibrium price will be this suppose P I am writing P A star and another it is P C star. P C star is the or O P C star O P C star that is the price paid by the customer paid by the customer O P A star that is price received C E I V D received by the sellers ok and difference between these two tax received by the government ok. So, let me repeat again this much price actually customers are paying from their pocket out of that this much this much sellers are getting ok and whatever the remaining amount that is the tax amount we told right that is going to the government as tax per unit ok. So, how we can understand this uh, solution ok because so far we did not pose here in this diagram in this diagram tax is imposed on whom if tax is imposed on sellers supply curve will move this way and as a result new equilibrium here ok. So, this much price actually sellers are taking from the customers out of that this much sellers are giving to the government because tax is imposed on the sellers ok and remaining thing sellers are getting. Alternatively, if, if say uh, tax is imposed on buyers ok demand curve shifts this way ok. So, demand curve shifts that way. So, what will happen right actually this much price buyers are giving to the sellers and this much buyers are giving to the government. So, this much actually to total this much OPC star that is actually paid by the buyers from their pocket out of that a portion sellers are getting and remaining portion buyers they are paying to the government because tax is imposed on the buyers by the government. So, that is the way how it will imposition of a tax on a commodity unit quantity tax uh, on a commodity uh, how it will have implication on the equilibrium price quantity right. Let us stop here ok and we will we will continue in our next lecture that that wage of the tax another another important concepts are there uh, is there called wage of the tax that we will discuss in our subsequent lecture. Let us stop here. Thank you.